Before watching the video, don't forget to subscribe the channel and enable bell notification to never miss an update from us. Hello everyone and welcome to the video. This is Ashima Shukla and in this video we are going to talk about current events of the day. So this video has been made keeping in mind that you all are banking aspirants or other government exam aspirants and would require a bit of uh, detailed view on certain pointers and in certain pointers you might require a single line of view. So we'll be looking at accordingly with the news events of what event we are going to cover. Uh, before we begin on the video, since this being my first one, I would like to tell a few things about current affairs and then we are going to begin with. Uh, most of you are quite uh, old viewers or you might be old preparators and mu uh, must be preparing since a long time ago. But for the new ones also, this uh, is going to be helpful in the idea that uh, current affairs is one of those topics which is being covered widely right now. There is a huge range of questions that comes in examination in form of current affairs indirectly, more of indirectly than directly. So what comes up is that will ask you and it seemingly will be like it is of uh, you know maybe biology maybe of agriculture maybe of economy but somewhere or the other it will have its basis in current affairs so we are going to have a look in that basis that uh, even the static range which is required to be covered along with current affairs or which can be uh, imposed as an indirect current affairs that would also be covered so that uh, you don't face the issue that when you see the paper you see that it is completely static because most of it is going to be current affairs and you can take that from any educator right now any educator would tell you that most of the examination section of the general awareness section will come from current affairs directly or indirectly right so with this i'm going to begin the video before we begin i would like all of you to please subscribe to the channel for daily updates on the videos and do like the video to show the support of the video right here we go with the first news event for us that is dhan lakshmi bank now what has happened with dhan lakshmi bank is that rbi has approved a three member interim committee or a temporary committee of directors so a committee of directors has been approved by rbi for three members right now there are three members so there's going to be one head and two members so head of the committee is g subramonia ayer and members are raj gopalan nayar and pk vijay so uh, question can be asked of the perspective that how many members committee has been approved and who is the head of the committee of Dhan Lakshmi Bank which has been approved by RBI. Right. Along with that, there is an additional director on the board and who has been appointed as the director on board, that is DK Kashyap. This is a direct appointments question. So this question cannot be asked by uh, altering into a static. It will be asked directly as it is an appointments section question. Right. Now, how long is this additional director going to be there? Additional director is going to be till 2022. The post of additional director has been made till 22nd of September, if I'm not wrong about the date, till 2022. One static portion that can be asked is the headquarters of bank. So headquarters of Dhan Lakshmi Bank are in Thrissur. That is the only static information which can be concerned. Rest of all, this is an appointment segment. Right. Moving to the next news event, that is interest rates on small savings schemes have been kept unchanged. Now, every quarter, the uh, interest rates are changed depending on the economic situation. So whatever the economic situation is there, accordingly, interest rates are revised. So for the term of October to December quarter. Now, this is we are talking about October to December. So, for the quarter of October to December, the interest rates have been unchanged. Now, in the examination of the hours, they won't ask if it is changed or unchanged. No, they'll ask you the exact rate which is there, right? So, that is one part of this uh, news event. That is that what is the static region of it? The statistics, what are the statistics? First of all, who changes it? 
one question is who changes this who decides the interest rates of these small savings schemes so that is notified by the ministry of finance so if they will ask you who notifies about the interest rates and the options have finance ministry the answer is going to be the ministry of finance all right next uh, what are the small savings now if uh, someone asks you what are small saving schemes they are those schemes in which you invest for a certain time period and you will get returns uh, which may be compounded annually or might be quarterly but they are meant for saving so you will gain interest on those schemes right so what are those they are ppf national saving certificate citizen senior citizen saving schemes kisan vikas patra term deposit and rd these are the major five these are the major six schemes which which are the small saving schemes you can say right now what are the interest rates first we'll see these this and then we will look up at these schemes also why we will look at the schemes because that comprises our static section that i was talking to you about so first of all we'll go with the current section that is ppf annual interest rate is 7.1% as of now national saving certificate at 6.8% senior citizen saving scheme which is a 5 year scheme at 7.4% kisan vikas patra at 7.9% so 6.9% term deposit term deposits are fds basically term deposits are fds and for fds which are for 1 to 5 years long the term deposit is 5.5% to 6.7% of quarterly uh, quarterly uh, investment or quarterly returns that are done and 5 year rd rd is recurring deposit the recurring deposit will be at 5.8% now we uh, you all might be aware about fds and rd fixed deposit and fd is fixed deposit so you might be quite aware about fixed deposits and recurring deposits if you are not i have uh, explained this in a video about uh, banking account so video is especially made for types of bank accounts and in that i have explained about rd and fd you can go through that but the remaining four the top ones ppf national saving certificate senior citizen saving scheme and kisan vikas patra these are the four which are quite in news now now since this event has come up this uh, there was a revision which was done small saving schemes related uh, it is so we'll have to look at what these are because there might be certain questions that can be posed in the form of uh, statement based that can be asked so let's have a look at them first first is public provident fund the ppf scheme which we call now what is ppf scheme it is a long term investment option how long 15 years long term investment option it is backed by government of india government of india has a quite a role in it and therefore it is considered as a very stable form of investment but what is the minimum period at least 15 years it can be extended to 5 years also and the extension can be based on investment or non investment like my 15 years are complete now if i want to keep investing for 5 more years my wish if i don't want to extend for uh, if i don't want to invest for 5 more years but i want that money in the account for 5 more years i can do that also like i don't need to withdraw it immediately after 15 years i can keep the amount there itself right the minimum amount is 500 rupees right so minimum i have to invest at least 500 rupees but i can invest according to my wish but now since this is one of those schemes which uh, by which the income tax can be avoided so it can be like it is completely exempted from tax right so since it is exempted from tax there might be certain limit of it so what is the limit of it that is 1.5 lakh now if someone does an investment of more than 1.5 lakh that will not be counted in the interest you can do it but it won't be counted in the interest or calculation of interest nothing it will be just like an extra amount that you put in but that will be of no use because that is not going to be counted right so maximum limit that they have is 1.5 lakh and this is exempted from tax it is exempted from right 
Next is the National Savings Certificate. National Savings Certificate is a fixed income investment scheme. And in this, the maturity period is of five years. So uh, you give an amount for a fixed term period of five years and a certain amount of returns will be given according to the interest. Now, this is also in the same part. There is no maximum limit of it. But only till 1.5 lakh will be exempted from tax. So this is also exempted from tax. But if someone does an investment of more than 1.5 lakh, then they will be covered under Income Tax Act. So according to Section 80C of Income Tax Act, if someone does an investment of more than 1.5 lakh, in that case, the in investment in national savings certificate, then that will be counted in the income tax. So it is a taxable amount there, right? And the rates I have just told you in the previous video, I guess it was 6.8%. Next is Senior Citizens Savings Scheme. Now, this scheme, as the name suggests, has an age limit, right? So, it is for all the Indian residents who are over the age of 60 years. Someone who is above the age of 60 years, they can invest in this scheme. And after that, now this investment, how is it going to be there? It is a five-year scheme. So, for five years, they can invest. And once the five years are complete, and they still want to invest, they still are, uh, you know, they feel themselves capable of investing more, they can invest for three more years. So an extension of three years can be given if they want to, depending on whether they feel themselves as capable enough or not, right? Then we have Kisan Vikas Patra. The fourth one, which was Kisan Vikas Patra, it is basically a scheme that doubles the investment. So how much ever you invest, it is going to just double the scheme, right? Uh, investment is done mostly in the multiples of 100. Multiples of 100. Although right now it is of 1,000, 5,000 and so on. There are certain uh, limits to it as of now. But it is mostly done in the multiples of 100. And it is also backed by Government of India. And maturity period varies. Now, over here I am giving you the maturity period which is notified right now. That is 10 years and 4 months. 124 months basically. Total we can say is 124 months. But it is changes accordingly according to the time movement it keeps on changing so what happens is right now as per the notification it is 124 months but it may change in the future time it depends completely on the ministry and the government of how much amount or how much time period they want the kisan vikas patras to be off but what is important is that the maturity value is pre-printed so what happens is that uh, what happens is that if I am uh, purchasing a Kisan Vikas Patra, on the certificate, the amount that I will receive after the maturity will be printed. Like if I'm investing of 5,000, the final amount is going to be 10,000 because it will just double it. That is, uh, or whatever the interest is, that is going to be printed on it, pre-printed on it. But for how long is it going to be there? That will completely depend on the time at which I am purchasing it. Right. So this uh, this is the four major small investment schemes that are here, which are basically long term, but give uh, assured interest rates. Right. And they are government backed. Now we have the next news event, which is Foreign Contribution Regulation Amendment Act 2020, which is an amendment of Foreign Contribution Amendment Act. 2010. So the act was of 2010 and it has been amended now and amendment has been basically done for the NGOs, right? So amendment uh, has been done keeping in mind the NGOs and their foreign investments, right? So what you need to remember is which act has been amended by this amendment act, that is the act of 2010. It was effective from 29th of September although. So what is the amendment? First of all, now NGOs can accept, transfer and utilize foreign donations and contributions. That has been done. But uh, on the investments, on the uh, amount they can invest or amount they can regulate, that has been amended. How it has been amended? First of all, Aadhaar card requirement has been mandated. 
it is mandatory that all the people the major people of an ngo basically they have to have their aadhar card so uh, aadhar card numbers of all the office bearers is mandatory thing at the time of registration the office bearers of ngo have to give their aadhar uh, aadhar card number and the second thing is all those who are foreigners someone who is not indian so they have to submit their passport as their identity or they have to submit their overseas citizen of india card oci is overseas citizen of india so overseas citizen of india card or passport has to be uh, submitted at the time of registration if any foreigner is involved in the office of ngo so if a foreigner is an office bearer they have to give passport or oci card if the person is not a foreigner or if the person is indian then they have to submit their aadhar card aadhar card number basically then administrative expenses of ngo have been lowered what do you mean by that that means that whatever funding is there of the ngo no matter what the amount is only 20% can be spent on administrative earlier it was 50% it has been reduced from 50% to 20% that means that if the ngo is funded of 100 rupees earlier they could spend 50 rupees on the administration now they can spend only 20 rupees on it right so no matter how much foreign funding is there whatever amount of foreign funding is there only 20% of that foreign fund goes to the administrative segment right so in this section 8 has been amended next it bars the authorized individuals in utilizing or receiving foreign contribution without government approval so what happens is that if someone is receiving the fund they need if any foreign fund is being received or any foreign contribution has even so as then been announced they have to get it approved from the government no matter what the amount maybe it 1 dollar they have to get it approved by the government and only then can they utilize it before announcing before getting approved they cannot uh, you know spend the amount that has been received right and the last one is that fcra account in sbi has been mandated so all those uh, foreign contribution uh, registrations are there whatever happens all these kind of accounts which have foreign which are there for receiving of foreign contribution they have to be opened in sbi branch in delhi so the sbi branch uh, state bank of india branch which is in delhi only over there can you open an fcra account and over there only will receive the foreign funds so single place so that it is easy to regulate them. the basic idea is that it should be easy to regulate uh, all the funds that are being received right apart from this you might face something a static question and apart from this another point of static question that you can face is that who is the union minister of home affairs union minister of home affairs now you can face this question so the answer is going to be amit shah not a tough question but a possibility and that's what i'm here for right so uh this i guess is clear about foreign contribution regulation amendment act next sunidhi project the sunidhi project has been launched by coal mines provident fund organization cmpfo and cmpo fo is a statutory body under coal ministry what is a statutory body a statutory body is a non constitutional body it is non constitutional body which has been given the rights from the legislature side that they can make rules and they can uh, move on certain things regulate a lot of things but it is not a constitutional one and it can be you know kind of broken down at any point of time broken down what is what do we mean by broken down that simply means that it can be uh, taken down whenever it there is no need of it because we don't need to go through all the constitution to remove it 
right now as for the sunidhi scheme what does sunidhi stand for sunidhi stands for superior new generation information and data handling initiative and as the name suggests its its basic idea is to digitize the entire provident fund and pension related activities so all those who are retired personals of and concerned with the uh, uh, working under the ministry of coal they all uh, will have their um, provident funds pensions deposit links everything will be digitized and will be in sync with disaster recovery center at bhubaneswar so data center will be at hyderabad and that is going to be in sync with disaster recovery center at bhubaneswar and due to that linking thing that has happened the uh whatever the information is regarding their pension provident fund everything that is going to be digitized right so who are uh, what kind of companies are there which are going to be covered under it so all the retired employees of bharat cooking coal cooking coal limited and uh so bccl basically so all the retired employees uh, who have their pension and provident fund all the retired employees of bccl they are going to be covered under this right next kritagya online pension submission and tracking now for online pension one we have done is this one sunidhi project uh for the coal mines provident fund organization now the second one is kritagita online pension now what is kritagita online pension it is first of all of assam assam chief minister uh, sarbananda sonowal he has uh, you know unveiled it recently and the basic idea of this is that uh, there should be no problem for all those who are retired government employees because they have to submit a lot of paperwork and they have to prove a lot of things so for that work that can be done online now and furthermore if the submission has been done after submission uh, about the tracking of it that um, uh, where has it reached has it been approved or not or in which office it is stuck right now everything can be taken care of via this portal like so this is the portal which has been launched by assam government that is an important one second question that is important so first question is that assam it is important second who is the chief minister of assam that is important and the third question is that who is the governor of assam that is important so who is the governor that is jagdish mukhi right there are a lot of things for which assam is quite in news there are a lot of in, uh, lot of decisions that assam has taken that that the reason why it is in news so we'll uh, you can recall through the current affairs events of that as well but chief minister and governor that ways become more important next shore surface to surface nuclear capable ballistic missile has been test fired in apj abdul kalam island first of all the question possible is that which countries is it or what is shore so shore is a surface to surface nuclear capable ballistic missile now this can be asked a direct question that recently it was tested by drdo drdo had tested it recently so what is the name shore and what kind of it it is a surface to surface nuclear capable ballistic missile third where was it tested apj abdul kalam island fourth where is apj abdul kalam island so apj abdul kalam island is over here now they won't give you the map, map basically that's for sure so you they'll ask you the state so it is in odisha that it comes near the bitar kanika national park so now another question that, that that can be seen is that in which state is bitar kanika national park so bitar kanika national park is in odisha and the apj abdul kalam island is also in odisha right next question now it has been test fired by drdo so the possible question is that who is the chairman of drdo so then we can have is about chairman and the chairman of drdo is g satish reddy right so there are the possible questions next news atal tunnel has been inaugurated by the prime minister modi recently it is the world's longest highway tunnel first thing what is the name of world's longest highway tunnel atal tunnel 
where has it been inaugurated what is the place that is manali in himachal pradesh third thing what places are connected via this tunnel it is it connects manali and lahol spiti valley so it's basically something like rohtang pass or some places like rohtang pass are connected but rohtang pass remains closed for 6 months right because of the snowfall so that is why atal tunnel is going to act as Uh, the as the pathway at the time when rohtang pass cannot be used so it can be an all season travel time now next is who has constructed it so it has been constructed by bro border roads organization border roads organization right next aerial seeding has been done by ins dega indian naval ship now first of all this involves the navy Indian naval ship Dega has uh, been has done aerial seeding recently. Now, what do we uh, say about aerial seeding? What does it mean to do aerial seeding? That is, that naval helicopters dropped approximately fifty thousand seed balls. Fifty thousand seed balls were dropped off in Vishakhapatnam, and how are seed balls? This is how seed balls look. so they have the seed and surrounded by a soil so when they are dropped they go into the soil and then they flourish or they grow the embryo grows and when they will be growing they will be growing in the soil now so it is a kind of ball created for the seed and when they fall whichever fertilizes easily that will quickly grab upon the floor and grow so it will reduce the time comparatively like Uh, going and uh, planting each and every plant and that is going to take a lot of human effort that takes a lot of human effort so to reduce that effort and to do more of a plantation thing and less of the effort work this air dropping works now air dropping was quite in news recently as well because last month or so haryana also did the same thing haryana government did this aerial seeding thing on aravalli hills so uh, it was of iit kanpur drone if i'm not wrong iit kanpur drones were used and they uh, planted the uh, or they used this kind of uh, seed capsule not exactly seed balls but seed capsules were dropped off in aravalli hills by haryana government to increase the plantation of the area right seed capsule also something like that they are just like the bullet shaped thing so they are something like this and they have all the manure fertilizer and everything required for a seed along with seed in it it goes in the soil the capsule decomposes and the plant grows right next is vaishvik bhartiya vigyanik your vaibhav summit which was inaugurated recently by the prime minister narendra modi it's a virtual summit it was launched virtually so it is a virtual summit and it is inaugurated for overseas and resident indian researchers indian overseas and resident researchers they had inaugurated this summit which will continue till 31st of october so this has been a month long initiative basically so this initiative has been launched for a month long and it is going to last till 31st of october now what is on 31st of october that is sardar patel jayanti sardar patel jayanti is on 31st of october the idea of the summit is basically to uh, increase the research area in india and how it can be enriched and how it can be made better into right now this is going to be all for the current events but before i take your leave uh, has a very important thing for all the aspirants that is uh, a quiz which is held on entry app it's a daily basis quick uh, quiz you can download the app from the google play store you go to your segment that is choose banking and insurance and after you choose banking and insurance you go through whichever exam you want to take up here this window will open up and over here you will find the quiz of daily current affairs right when you will see daily current affairs over here you can see daily current affairs right once you see it you will find the quiz over here 
whichever date you want to take quiz it is a free quiz so it will have 10 questions which you have to answer in 6 minutes and you will be given or you will be evaluated on that. So 10 marks quiz, 10 questions, 10 marks and you'll have 6 minutes. So it's going to be a daily revision kind of thing for you that you can go through. Uh, at the end of the day, you can go to the app, take the quiz and evaluate yourself. So there's going to be the proper quiz just like a banking exam and then you'll be given result too. How many correct, how many wrong, how many unanswered and then you can have a look at the answer key as well. You'll get to know how much time you took, how many questions you gave, per, how, many, how much time you gave per question and what was your score. Everything, your whole analytics will be available and the answer key will also be available. And that too on daily basis. So do download the app, do subscribe to the channel, hit the like button on this video and do comment on how you like it. So thank you so much and I'll see you uh, every day. This video of current affairs is going to run from Monday to Friday. So you all can come to the channel every day and have your daily dose of current affairs. Thank you so much for being with us and have a great day ahead.